Hey, look, I, there's faith people out there that believe, you know this as well as I do, that believe that all they got to do is pray, and, and God will protect them from, from snakes and mountains and volcanoes and, and, and coronaviruses. That's all they got to do. And you know they believe that. And I'm not, I'm not commenting on the belief from the position of whether I accept that or not. What I'm commenting on, you know those people exist. There are pastors that are afraid people won't come to their services now because of this, that they won't want to be around other people. That they're not coming to church, or offerings are going to go down. That's fear. Yeah, well, we've is. got pastors that are already saying, "Don't come to church. We'll just do it over video." I want you in my church. Right. If we have to pass out thermometers. Right. If we find one with a fever, let's 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 get him healed right there. Yeah. What? Hey, guys. Now think about this a minute. Be, think, be thinking about yourself, particularly those of you who live more by faith. What if you do get it? Big deal. God is spreading it in your synagogues. Yes. You're under judgment because you oppose his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why you have a plague in your synagogues. Repent. Repent and believe on the name of Jesus Christ, and the plague will stop. Well, little column A, little column B. First of all, I just want to tell you what a great show you got. I listen to you all the time. Thank you, thank you. What do you want to talk about? Hey, did I tell you guys I got a goat? Yeah, baby! <laughs> well, good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, wherever you are, whatever you do. A lot of things happen in the world today. Most of them are far beyond our control, you might say. So perhaps it's time we took a pause and thought about life and thought about the laws of gravity, culture, science, politics, religion, and or the news. Don't touch that dial. Just try to hear me out for a little while. Well, it might be the easiest thing in the world, I guess. Maybe it's just the oldest profession in the world. Either way, the idea of using fear or faith, using faith, to fear monger and demand ransoms is really, and I mean really, pissing me off today. What else is new? Am I right? Here's how you get a hold of me. The text machine is area code 209 dave That's 209-565-3283. The email dave at thedavebowmanshow.com. Of course, we're on the web. Choose your preferred non-denominational web search browser to take you to thedavebowmanshow.com. Or look for The Dave Bowman Show on Facebook, Twitter, and iTunes. Ego Biberi Capulis at Olive Verve. I drink coffee so that others might live. Well, I don't know what day it is. 16, 17, I don't know. I'm a bit frazzled, as you can probably see here. Said to myself, I should uh, comb my hair, take a shower, put on a hat, something. And just, at this point, what difference does it make? I mean, seriously. This has gone on long enough. I was, uh, I fully intended to come in here today, just full of piss and vinegar, I guess. I was mad. I was, I was, I've stewed on this. I, I worked last night, and we're going to talk about that in a minute here, but, um, the whole time I was driving, I was just, I was just getting more and more angry about some of the things I wanted to talk about. I, again, I don't necessarily care what your politics are when it comes to the coronavirus. I, I really don't. I'm not, it's not that there's nothing involved with it. It's not that there's nothing associated with it that's worth talking about because there are. But number one, I do not believe that this is a fraudulent violence, vi- virus, nor do I believe that it's a, a scam or I don't believe that it was bioengineered. None of that. Okay? I don't believe the conspiracy theories. I I believe there's a virus that mutated because that's what viruses do. Went from animal host to humans to spreading. I mean, that's what viruses do, folks. This is, this is evolutionary 101 mentality. It's not, it's not worth getting upset about. That said, I don't necessarily believe that it's going to kill the millions that we're being told that it's going to kill, nor do I believe that it says dangerous necessarily in the sense uh, to justify what we've done as a nation. Now, that said, there are some legal arguments to be made, and I get it, and I I really do believe this. I told Rodbo this the other day. I really do believe that 
we're going to be told eventually that the reason it wasn't that serious was because the government's actions saved us all. All hail government. You know, um, 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 amen, hallelujah, and all that. <clears throat> in the meantime, as I said on that show a couple weeks ago, you know that there are those people out there that are going to act stupidly. We've seen this over and over again. Here in Washington State, Mount Vernon, on the other side of the sound, down a little bit, we, uh, we had a choir. A choir of old people. A, a choir of people who are the primary focus of danger for this virus. They went ahead and held their choir practice, about 60 people or so. Two of them are now dead because they contracted the coronavirus. Now, that doesn't mean they died of the coronavirus. They may have had underlying health problems that the coronavirus contributed to. Be that as it may, why in God's name would you do that? I mean, not just not holding the choir rehearsal, but <laughs> seriously, people, why would you go? Kenneth Copeland, who you heard bits and pieces of there in the beginning of this whole thing, made it clear that even if you lose your job because of the coronavirus lockdown, don't you dare stop giving to my church. Don't you dare do it. Keep giving me money. And if that wasn't enough to just infuriate you and piss you off beyond belief, then you got at least one Florida pastor. Sorry, I said that wrong. Florida, duh, pastor who insists that only Jews are getting the coronavirus, the churches are safe, because they believe in Jesus, whereas we Jews do not. So therefore, he claims that God has sent the plague to the synagogues to kill Jews because we don't believe in Jesus, you see. And the problem, of course, here is that he may not have noticed in the news that the churches that are gathering are having similar problems. And most of us Jews, and I'm not trying to be rude here, but most of us Jews are smart enough, we're, we're smart enough to stop doing big meetings like that pretty much from the get-go. And really, quite frankly, it's the churches led by idiots like this guy who didn't. And now at least two people are dead in, in, in Washington because of this. And then you have uh, the, the pastor down in Tampa arrested. He's on his video page today talking about how this is a First Amendment issue, this First Amendment issue. And maybe it is, maybe it ain't. I don't know. I'm willing to, I'm willing to, I'm willing to entertain those arguments. But again, we've been through the constitutionality of this. Once the state of emergency is declared by the people we elected, right, we put these idiots in charge. They took advantage of the laws that they passed and we allowed them to pass, and they declared a state of emergency. And under the, the Compact Clause, and under the Commerce Clause, and under the 14th Amendment, and under the 10th Amendment, they have powers that we didn't and understood that we gave them. And so things are going to happen. I was very angry yesterday. i got to be honest with you. I was, I, it's why I didn't tape this show yesterday. It was because I was so angry about these idiots. I really was. I, I, I don't know that I have a good enough vocabulary to express to you how angry I was about people like Copeland. Send me money. Keep sending me money. You, we want you in our church. Even if we got to pass out thermometers, if somebody's sick, we'll get them healed right then and there. Because, you know, Jesus does that, right? Sorry to be mocking, but it's stupid. And then, of course, this asshat with his, you know, Jews are getting the coronavirus because, because we, don't, we don't believe in his son, Jesus Christ. Well, the anger built, and I got to be honest, with you, it was, I, I thought to myself, this is going to be, this is going to be one of those righteous indignation shows where I'm just screaming and I'm pounding on the desk and I'm, <laughs> and then they called me about an hour before the shift started last night and said, we need help, can you come in? And I said, sure, because, you know, some things are more important than sitting here behind a microphone. Now, just so you understand this, we, 
we run three shifts a day. So they start at 7 in the morning and end at 10 at night. So there's a 7 to 11 shift, an 11 to 4 shift, and a 4 to 10 p.m. shift. Now, what sets the evening shift apart, which is the main shift that I work, we call it third shift, is that there's a hard time limit. If you leave at 7 in the morning and you have seven, eight deliveries, you know, if you get back by 11, great, or by 10, great. If you're not back by noon, it's not a big deal. There's really no pressure to get it done. Same with the afternoon shift. But the evening shift, you have a hard 2200 deadline. You got to be, you got to be off the road at 2200. And that means either on your way back to the store, you can't make deliveries after 2200, 10 p.m. Because, you know, let's face it, people don't want you knocking on their door at 10 o'clock at night. So it, there is a little bit of built-in pressure with the, with the third shift. So when they called me, I knew they already had trouble. And one of the, trouble, one of the problems they had was the, the second shift, the 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. shift, was already a couple of hours behind. One of the drivers was supposed to work third shift too, and he, he didn't get out of the store until after 3. It's going to be an issue. So, yeah, I'll go in. What I should have realized when I went in was – there's no way they're going to be ready for, for us on third shift, and they weren't. So we end up waiting around, and I've got, a, I've got a load. It's not a huge load. It's seven deliveries, and it's about a four-hour run, according to the map thing that, that puts us out there. So 4.30 comes by, uh, get the paperwork, and, of course, we're supposed to leave. According to this thing, everything's supposed to be ready at 5.04. They give you a half hour to load. Which doesn't take that long, by the way. But uh, anyway, supposed to leave at 534, be back at 2134. Of course, 530 rolls around, there's no load. 630 rolls around, there's no load. It was close to, it was close to 715 before we got everything together and, and loaded out and got ready to head on the road. And it was, uh, it's still a four-hour run. I mean, you're still going out about as far as you can go here. And what, what you got to understand is, in, in this particular area, it, it's not like other areas, I guess. There, there's not a lot of arterials. There's not a lot of highways that go places where you need to go. Um, and speed limits are really low on side roads, as they should be, because they're narrow, they're dark, lots of traffic. Well, <laughs> not now, but now there's a lot of people walking and stuff. So... A 16-mile drive here can take as much as 40 minutes because of speed limits and stoplights and directions and stuff like that. So one of the stops I have is clear out in Kingston. You can look at it on a map. Um, the, the, again, it's slow getting there. It doesn't look that far away on the map, but as I tell people all the time, Seattle's only 16 miles away, but it'll take you three hours to get there, whichever way you go. So you, you just got to keep that in mind that it takes time to travel these things. So I got on the road, and I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I uh, reworked some of the routing and reworked some of the stuff because we can do a little bit of that. And the guy that actually does our routing doesn't live over here, so he doesn't know what we're doing sometimes, and he doesn't really know the area that well. At any rate, that said, we... Um, <clears throat> I made up about, I, I, by within an hour, I had made up about 25, 30 minutes of this. And I was, I was cruising pretty good. And <laughs> I had one that was, I thought was someplace else. And it was out in the boonies somewhere and blew all my time. But as I was driving around, when I first got in the truck, let me tell you what, I was mad. I was, I was still in my head. I'm still hearing that idiot's voice. He, the reason it's in your synagogues is because you reject Jesus Christ. And if you just believe on the name Jesus Christ, he'll send, he'll stop the plague, which is just really, it's just a, it's just an idiot. And I realize he's not representative of all Christianity. I get that, but unfortunately, it's representative of too much of Christianity, and. <laughs> This is just a way of blaming Jews for the coronavirus. It's pure anti-Semitism. It's pure racism. It, it, it's vile. And yet it hides behind the Bible going, well, I'm just telling you what the word of God says, which, of course, it's not what it says. You probably feel that way. I feel that way, too. But then you got Copeland going on about, let's get these people in the churches, get them healed, because that's all we got to do. You know, when you got an infectious virus, 
if you just lay hands on people, you can heal them, right? And <laughs> you wonder why. I, I don't know who you are that's sending this idiot money. I, I, I have no idea who you are. But whoever you are, stop doing it, please. Find some other church somewhere. Stop sending that asshat money. He's a fraud. And I was getting mad and mad and mad and mad. But as I drove around, and as I've driven around recently, there's something very calming about it for me. I got to be honest with you. There's something very relaxing about it. I know it doesn't sound like it should be relaxing because you get stuff done, you got to do it's heavy, and but you, you got an average, I would guess, 15, 20 minute drives between each stop. And we go everywhere from basically the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in the south to the Hood Canal Bridge in the north and everything, everything east and west on the peninsula between. And so when you're driving, you get to see sites like the one I'm showing here to the people who are watching the video. This is a little place called Raft Island, not the island that you see in the picture. I'm actually on the bridge to Raft Island. And you just, uh, I happen to be there at low tide and you get to see sites like that. You get to see this beautiful area that we live in. And as I said, it's very relaxing to me. And I could begin to feel some of that anger kind of, kind of drifting away. There's other places. This is one of my favorites. Uh, this is overlooking Eagle Harbor on Bainbridge Island, looking towards Seattle. And the, the, the ferry was pulling out. I, I, I stopped and watched this for about five minutes because that little boat in the middle was on the wrong course, I thought. And it looked like he was headed right in front of that, and he cut right across the front of that ferry. It's kind of intriguing to watch as a sailor. It was kind of a, it was kind of an interesting thing to see, and I enjoyed watching that. And again, as you're looking at things like this, it's hard to hold on to a lot of anger. It's hard to hold on to a lot of frustration when I'm doing this, and it's one of the reasons why I've come to enjoy this so much. There's. There's several reasons why, but one of them is that it, it, it really does uh, relax me in a lot of ways. It is very hard work. As I was telling Rod the other day, the trucks are not designed for people like me with, with knees that do not bend. And so by the time I get done with a, with, a, with a shift like last night, I am physically beat. Between climbing up and down into the truck, between moving the totes, between trying to wedge my leg in there so I can drive, it, 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 is, it is fairly strenuous work and I'm usually very tired and in a lot of pain by the time I get done but I can't even begin to tell you how relaxed I am it's a remarkable feeling it's a remarkable emotion to me and it's remarkable to me that I can I can go from being angry about some floored duh pastor who honestly and says that you know the coronavirus is because of the Jews, and the reason it's in the synagogues, which it isn't, is because we reject Jesus Christ, or because Copeland's out there going, well, well, just don't you dare stop sending me money. If you lose your job because of this, don't stop sending me money. Just keep sending me money. You keep tithing to me and all that crap. Just infuriates the, the, the living daylights out of me. Stupid people that don't think... Hey, let's go ahead and have choir practice. It's no big deal. I, I got to be honest with you. I, uh, I struggled with the idea of not having our submarine veterans meetings. We're scheduled to have a, a, a board meeting the first Saturday of the month and then the general meeting. And, and I, I almost canceled last month's board meeting because that's, I wasn't 100%. I should have canceled it. I didn't. I really regret that. Um, but then... You know, we, we, the, the board voted to go ahead and have the general meeting, and I'm so glad we didn't. I'm so glad we pulled our heads out of our collective butts and said, that's dumb, let's not do that. And we ended up holding a virtual meeting, which, uh, I, you know, again, I thought it was a pretty good thing. I thought it was a good idea, and I thought we did well with it. Uh, sometimes getting, getting people that are a little aged to adapt to technology can be a little challenging, but, but we, we pulled it off and it went great. I'm glad we did that. And we're going to have to do it again this month. And there's a, there's a certain level of me that's angry, of course, with these, 
these asshats like Copeland and this other guy down in Florida, duh. But there's also a realization that, look, we're all adults here. We're all functioning adults here. We ought to be able to make these decisions for ourselves. We ought to be able to think for ourselves and go, that guy's full of crap, and I'm not going to participate in that. I'm not going to, I, I'm not going to support somebody who, who thinks that way. There's this pastor down in Tampa that gets arrested for having a meeting because he's expressing his first amendment rights. I told you they'd be there. I told you there would be people like that. Jesus will protect us. He gets arrested, not for a first amendment violation, by the way, and he's, he's promising to get it, to do it again. And it's easy to look at him and go, well, he's the problem. He's the reason. But the real problem is the people that are listening to him, isn't it? The real problem is the people who are listening to him going, well, <laughs> Jesus will protect me because my pastor said so. Is that really what Jesus said? I mean, I did go to seminary. I do have some familiarity with this. I do have some knowledge in this particular area. I am a subject matter expert, you might say. And I'm reasonably sure that even if I was a Christian, I wouldn't be saying stupid crap like that. The people who say crap like that are self-interested. They are self-promoting. They are interested in serving themselves. Did you hear the people talking to Copeland? Oh, uh, we're, there's some bastards out there that are afraid that if the attendance goes down, their tithe will go down. Really? You Christians that are going to your churches by video, are you not sending your checks in for your tithe? Is, is, the, is, the, is the coronavirus keeping you from doing that? Is, is it really why you're going? If you're a pastor, are you really in the business of raising money? Is that really what you're about? <sighs> you're in the wrong business if you are. I mean, that's all I'm going to tell you. And like I said, that anger starts to build and it, it, it boils over and you get to the point where you're like, God, these people are just freaking stupid. They are just morons. It's bad enough their leaders are morons. You people following them, you're morons. You're not thinking for yourself. You're not. And you get angry and then you realize that it's just, it's a combination of, of self-adoration and pure racism. That's all it is. And I don't usually accuse people of that, but this clown down in Florida, Rick White, Rick Wiles, sorry, is an anti-Semite. And by definition, that makes him racist. <laughs> it's, it's too easy to debunk. And then you go on a drive. And last night they called me in and said, we really need help. Can you come in and help? And I, and I went in. And let me tell you, that was a tough drive. We're supposed to be off the road at 10 o'clock. I made, I had seven drops. I made the sixth drop out on Bainbridge Island at 9.59. There's a very nice guy and his wife, elderly. He's a Vietnam vet. And so we talked for a few minutes and, you know, about stuff like that, veteran stuff. And he was asking me because it was his first delivery and we're seeing a lot of that, people ordering for the first time. And so, you know, we, he was kind of talking about how the process goes and what we do. And, 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 and I knew I still had one delivery left, but it was 10 o'clock. So... I got on the I got back in the truck and I called him and said, you know, 10 o'clock, we're supposed to stop and not really, not going to make it. And there was this kind of silence on the end of the line. And I could tell I was talking to a very, I don't want to say very elderly, but an elderly person it was their first order. And she was, she was just, <laughs> we really need our groceries. We really need it. We can't get out. And so I said to her, are you, are you going to be up? I mean, it's, I'm, I'm 45 minutes from you. Are you going to stay awake that long? Are you going to be up that way? And she said, yeah, we'll be up. I said, well, then I'm, I'm going to bring them. So I called my boss and I said, you know what? These people need their groceries. She said, go for it. And so I made the 45-minute drive, kind of out of the way-ish, to drop off one last load of groceries last night at 11... I guess it was 1043 when I dropped them off. And by the time I got home, it was close to midnight. And I was beat. But you know what? That felt a hell of a lot better. It really did. Yesterday, it had rained. It even, believe it or not, it actually snowed about five snowflakes. I mean, there's just a little coat of snow on one part of my lawn up here. 
It was cold. It was rainy. It was hailing at one point. And then right before I got loaded, that rainbow came out, and I was telling my wife, I'd never really actually seen the violet in the rainbow before. And there it was. And I don't know if it was a sign. I'm not one of these people that believes in big signs from God or anything like that. I don't know if it was a sign. I don't know if it was meant just for me. I, 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 have, I, I got no idea. But I do know that that drive last night took a lot of the, a lot of the piss and vinegar out of me. And I just didn't... I just didn't want to sit here today and scream and yell and criticize and complain about people that I know are idiots. People that I know are morons. I don't need to worry about it. I can sit here and tell you what I believe and what I know, and that's what I do. You don't have to listen to me. You don't, have to, you don't even have to agree with me. I don't care. It doesn't change my life at all. What I do know is there are a lot of good people out there. And one of the things that I've enjoyed the most about what I do is I get to help them in a surprising and relatively simple way that both relaxes me and fulfills me in something that I've been missing for a long time. And while there are idiots in the world who would condemn me for my faith, disagree with me because of what I believe, or call me you know, foul names because I don't believe in the same deity that they believe in. None of that matters when you're handing somebody their, their grocery order and they really needed it at 1045 at night and you stayed late to do it. Sure, I get paid for it, but I got something a lot better than money out of that. So today I'm pretty mellow and I think that's good. I got to get going. Take the time right now. Tell the people that matter in your life you love them very much. You'd miss them if they weren't there, so don't pass up those opportunities. You don't want to have that regret. Plausibly Live, I'm Dave Bowman. This is my show, The Dave Bowman Show, right here at thedavebowmanshow.com. Be back this weekend with Rod, and see you next week, everybody. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay inside. Bowman Show is a Slippery Fish Entertainment production for the Podcast 99 Internet Radio Network. For more information or to complain about how the show offended you, the text or voicemail number is 209-565-DAVE. For more information about the show, log on to the Show.com. Hey, I'm going to go do something productive. I'm going to go watch television.